So hello there, welcome to Live with Lynn today. So today I'm gonna to talk about how I manage fears in my business. I'm just like everybody else, I have my fears and just like you probably do and and um, we all do. I mean, that's part of being human, right? Um, let me go back a couple of years, like 25 years, <laughs> and tell you about my worst fear. My This was, this was, um, the worst fear that I overcame. So way back then, I was I was I, I in Utah. I was born and raised in Utah. Grew up there. Uh, married a guy, and um, named Larry. I just say his name was Larry, and we got married. And then he was originally from California, and he really wanted to go back. And so I'm like, okay, you know, that's what he wanted. And um, I was kind of excited to get out of Utah and you know stretch my wings and go to California, and and. Um, so we moved to California. Um, totally, I ended up living there 20 years. But but while we're in California, um, my husband was very abusive. Um, he didn't hit me, but he threatened me. He he talked badly to me. He you know he bad mouthed me. He talked down to me. He was very verbally abusive to me and very controlling. He had me under his thumb, and. Um, so I, I, you know, it's funny when I first moved to California, I was so sheltered and he had, had fed me so full of stories about California that I swear when we drove across the border from Utah to California or not, I guess it's Nevada, whatever it is, to, when we drove across the California border, I was half expecting gang members there with guns aimed at me. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's just how, how naive I was, I mean, you know, but I got there and I found out California wasn't so bad. But again, he had me under his thumb. I wasn't allowed to have any friends. Um, he kept telling me about the crime and how unsafe it was. And so I was afraid to go out alone and, you know, all of that. And um, and I took me a long time, but I finally found a really good job. And that's the job I've been talking about. I was, you know, uh, director of marketing. I bet originally, I was buyer. And then I was director of marketing for this food distributor. But anyway, I, that's a long prologue into the story. But but um, I finally decided I needed to leave him. He just got so bad and so controlling and so abusive that I just couldn't do that anymore. And I had to leave him. But I was also like, what do I do? I'm 850 miles from home. I don't have the money to move back. I have a great job. Do I give that up? You know, what do I do? And, and um Ultimately, I decided to keep my job there and I and got an apartment. But I also knew that if I was going to survive, I was going to have to have friends. I was going to have to get a life. I mean, I couldn't just hide in my apartment all the time. And I had square danced a little bit in Utah years ago with my dad. You know, not very much, but a little bit. And I knew that it was a lot of fun. It was a great way to meet people. And there was um, somebody who lived around the corner from me and Larry that had a van that had a big square dancer on the back of the van. And um, I kept thinking, I'm going to, I'm going to go knock on that door and find out where the square dancers were. I never were. I never did that. I was too chicken. I never did that. But, but I did see an ad in the paper about a square dance class starting up. And so I went, um, I, I was kind of excited because I thought this is how I can meet people. This is going to force me to get out. It's going to force me to meet people. And so I, put it on my calendar and I showed up at the class, right? But here's the deal. When I got there, I was terrified. I couldn't get out of my car. I couldn't go in there. I didn't know anybody. I was I was still worrying, still freaking out about my fears about that it was dark outside and I'm in the strange parking lot. But I could not go into that. And, and then I got out of the car and I walked halfway to the building and then I walked back to my car. I must have looked like an idiot because I literally was going back and forth, back and forth from my car, halfway to that building, back to my car, halfway to that building. I was just terrified. And finally, I just, just said, that's it. I have to do this. Just go in. Just stop it and just go in. So I went in. And you know what? Luckily, square dancers are pretty friendly people. And probably didn't hurt that, you know, it was a new woman coming in there and the men wanted someone to dance with. But anyway, um, I, I did it. I overcame my fears and I went in there and I did make a couple of friends. People were really friendly and I started square dancing and, you know, it was it was just amazing. And the funny part about that story was later on, I find out that the person who owned that van 
around the corner from me that I was going to go knock on the door ended up being my next husband, Mr. Richard. You know, I'll know Richard. He is the man I married and he is the man that owned that van around the corner from me. Funny how things work, huh? But that was much later. Obviously, he was married back when I was married. And, you know, much later, we ended up together. Um, but yeah, so I do the same thing in my business. You know, I have to go out. If you want to grow a business, you have to meet people. You have to meet more people. You have to get brochures out to people. And um, and the only way to do that is to get out of your comfort zone. And, you know, that's not always easy. I get scared too. But what I have found is if, it's, if I can just force myself to just do it, if I could just force myself to just do it, it's amazing once you start how much easier it is. And that's, you know, it. I don't know that you ever totally get over being afraid. It just is what it is. But thanks for putting up with me today. I will see you again tomorrow. Have a great day. Talk to you soon.